All right, as the thumbnail says, this is how I'm gonna do this and everything. This is a very common question asked, how to adapt a bar to a chainsaw. And I've had this Oregon bar laying around a little while, so we'll go ahead and we're going to adapt it to this Pioneer P62 High Performance. <laughs> As far as planning much of anything out, um, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> we, uh, I've had this bar laying around a little while. It's a 28 inch, I think it is. 28 inch bar. Make sure everybody can see. Yeah, we're out here on a workbench and stuff like that, you know, messing around with it. It's nice out. And the uh, problem we got here is the studs are bigger than the hole. <laughs> Keep your dirty thoughts to yourself. So, what we're gonna have to do here, let's see how much bigger that how much of a difference there is. 0.37 on the studs. Yeah, about what would you call that? 0 0.3132 on the slot. So what I'm gonna do is clamp this down to the workbench. I'm gonna clamp it down here. Just a nice little quick video, hopefully. Don't fall over, y'all. No need to be doing that today. So I'm just gonna seat clamp it to the bench. What I'm gonna do, is take the cutoff wheel here. I'm gonna cut into the back here. I don't care about this little back part here. And we're gonna just grind it real nice and everything. Cut and just massage both sides a little bit. Now, you don't use cut wheels as grinders, all right? I'm gonna put that out there. What I do is what I do. So, I'm gonna cut that, massage it a little bit. And as far as oil holes, this bar already lines up with that. I don't know if it was made for a Pioneer home light or what, but it's a, it's an Oregon 2550, so 28 inch, 50 gauge, um, A281, and its top number is 11718. Like I said, I've had this kicking around a little while, for three years, and it didn't fit any of my Max or the oil hole didn't line up, but I looked at it and said, We'll see if it'll get it to fit on this. And sure enough, we're going to make it. So, as far as spinning a chain, I did a video on that already. Go ahead and check that out. I'll put the link in the description on that or whatever. I'll put the description link, whatever. It'll be in the bottom there. We did that on the 790, how to spin it. So, you can watch this video and then you can also watch that one to spin a chain. And it's all with basic hand tools. Or just, you know, cheap, easy stuff. Go to Harbor Freight, like this Drill Master grinder. Got that cheap, and it's been rocking out loud and doing awesome. So, all right, let's go ahead. Let's get started on this. All right, we're plugged in. Um, always wear your proper safety gear and everything. So, go, go ahead. We're going to cut this and this. It's going to be extremely loud. I probably should get my own hearing protection, actually. Do I have any? I don't know. Eh, we're good. Wear your safety protection stuff, people. All right, to avoid all the noise, you kind of get the point there. Um, 
Maybe I'll have to last a little bit more and everything. This shouldn't really take too long. Nice little quick video here and everything and whatnot, but uh, yeah. So far, so good. And after a few minutes, slides right on there and has the little bit of up and down play you need. Yeah, that back stud is uh, a little loose on that. I don't want to split anything to get that undone. <laughs> I don't know if that was a good idea on Pioneer's part, but. So there it is. It, like I said, it wasn't going to be a super long video, but it was how, how I was going to approach this and everything. And like I said, the oiler holes, they. It lines up. So this top hole up here, I might have to, I might have to drill a little bit down on her and everything. Well, by the time we get everything tightened up, it's got the adapter on it too. I got to put on it and stuff like that. So hold on here. Let's see. How do you, how do you go on it? Right, there you go. Oh, hold there. That's on there. Oh yeah. It lines up. I'll probably have to scooch that down, that hole down a little bit. Let me zoom in here for you. Let me get in there for you guys. Set this flat. I'm try to pop flat. So yeah, there's the hole we're talking about. That's our oil hole, and it lines up with this. And this thing, I need to turn its oiler down. But overall, we have now got a bar for the old Pioneer. At least the adjuster should line up with it too. Theoretically. If not, I can always clearance for that too. Of course, who knows how much I've done anything on that, so. Right. I'll look into that here in a second and then we'll go from there. All right, I had to, I massage the adjuster because it's easier to do that than on this bar. I don't have a mill or anything like that and uh, drill bits, this is, a, this is an older bar, it's hardened steel and uh, it was just easier to massage the adjuster, which you can find those and everything. So ground a little bit on that. And now the adjuster is able to work on this. It's got great up, it's got the uh, little bit of up and down play that you will want on that. So I think it came out pretty well, pretty easy modification to do for a bar. Um, if boiler holes don't line up, you probably have to, what I've had to do in the past on Mac bars and everything, um, I've had to go and wherever the oiler what is on the saw and then where the oiler is, for instance, like McCullough, and then this is up here where they don't line up. I've ground a, with a Dremel tool, I've taken it and slotted it real far in on it to allow it to oil to travel. This path, you can try to drill through also right here. Um, you're gonna need a good drill bit on that, really like almost a cobalt bit one to get through. And uh, don't do it, and then if you flip the bar, you do the same exact thing on the top one and everything. So I've had to do that for adjusters. Uh, if you need to drill it, just drill a hole. Like say, gonna need good drill bits for that most of the time. These newer bars are cheaper steel, so regular drill bits get through it. But these older bars, the hardened steel on them, they're definitely, uh, they they put drill bits to the test or get a really good name and drill bit. But uh, this one, thankfully, everything lines up like it should. We're close enough and everything, it's gonna get plenty of oil. Um, the chain I'm gonna use is something from the 1970s. I'll go ahead and get that here for you. I've never taken off of this loop before, but I got it like three years ago and uh, I just never used it. it was, the guy shipped it to me and everything, got it for a really good price. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. I got chain links and everything, but it, it was made in South America from what I could find in the 1970s, and I don't know when they stopped or discontinued. But uh, I did find out that this has a eight pin, three, uh, 
eight pin three eight sprocket on it, which I was so found that out, and the bar fits perfectly for that. So this is the uh, chain I'm gonna be putting on it. Uh, Norman Prince Associates Premium Saw Chain. Oh yeah, he sent and also he had sent pieces and parts of a uh, Parker Incorporated Des Moines, Iowa. And it doesn't have everything on it. I think it was like a sharpener or something like that. Yeah, he sent me a Parker Chainsaw Sharpener. So it clamps onto it, but it didn't have all the parts on it and everything. That's literally all that it came with. So the roll had been used somewhat. It's semi-chisel, but uh, it doesn't have everything on it. So I sent that, but that's what we're going to be putting on it. It's definitely a, it's not China chain whatsoever. Seems to be pretty legitimate. Pretty legitimate stuff right here. So. Good ready go stuff. So I figured, you know what, we'll go ahead and we'll do that. Uh, I was going to convert to 3H from 404 just because mm -hmm. the bar fits and it's a 50 and I didn't want to use the expensive 404 50 on that. So this is the best option to go for that. So, all right, I'll be spinning that chain and hopefully here in the future, soon future, we will be seeing this thing cutting for the first time, probably my estimation, late 80s, early 90s. This thing has so little use on it. It looks like it was just more beat up than anything, but it has very little chain rash or anything that had happened to it. So. I don't I don't know her full story. I just know a couple bits and pieces of it and everything. So all right, so that's for that. Um don't forget to take you to take this off. I did this on the side. I uh took this off and uh it was on my Instagram of uh using uh, pretty much a redneck setup to pull it off. And uh I think it was original sprocket, clutch, and even drum bell on it. It's a pioneer drum on her, so everything looked good, greased up the bearing, and uh put her back together, so we're going to be ready to see it run. And some people have already seen it run if you watched Bell Hopper's live special we did. Um, but get to release the video of it running. And then will it cut and stuff like that. So hopefully this one goes smooth. So just so say thanks for watching. And like, please like that cha the, alg the YouTube algorithm has changed on it. So hitting that like button helps me out a ton. Um, subscribing and everything. Hopefully we'll have more of this in the future here. Um, uh, and if you're watching this, uh, theoretically buck and stock sounds like it's going to happen maybe. So you, if it is, you will see me there and I'll be bringing a lot of the arsenal. Um, I'm not going to say too much on it yet and everything, but, uh, somebody requested me to load up the truck and, uh, Load up the truck and go pay the gas bill for it. So to and from out of the kindness of their heart. So uh, we're going to have a lot of toys to play with there. You'll see me, Jeremy, and many other people at Buckenstock if it happens in September. So and I'm making this and this video is 2022. So we're going to go ahead and uh, end this video now. And uh, like I say, not saying too much on it because I don't know if it's happening yet. So I right, just want to say thanks for watching.